about to see. All right, we're back for game three. Uh, Georgia yeah. College won. USC Aiken won. Here we go. So I was talking with Sean, our reporter, <laughs> <laughs> slash sub, during the break, and he was talking about some of the reasons that he thinks that we lost. And, I mean, it comes down to champ select, no CC on that last team, no way to really control them. And then, you know, we even got outscaled a little bit, I think, too. I mean, yeah, yeah, That's what he was a saying. completely different team comp this game, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, we went with a completely different team comp. I mean. 100%. You know, they. Um, we brought more CC out in every a lane. A lot more. You know, every single lane. Actually, Except pretty much every single play. champion on our team has CC. Diana having sort of a pole knockback, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, counting as sort of a form of, like, minor CC for about 0.25 seconds. <clears throat> so giving a general rundown of what happened in champ select. Uh, the pick man stage. We could see that Georgia College started off with a Zyra ban and a Malzahar ban. Johnny realizing that Malzahar is quite an annoying champion to play against. They also took away the Thresh. Yep, they did take away that Thresh, giving them the Janna, you know, sort of forcing them into that, that pick right there. Not really much else. Janna being, you know, she's not, not too impactful, not good, not bad for the team. Just big shields and heals. That's all she's got. And uh, coming out of that, um, we banned Alawi and Nar to put the top laner into an even, you know, really, really pincering the support and the top laner into certain picks. And you can see that once again, they started out with a Sejuani ban, mm. Galio targeting our jungler and mid laner, and plus a Corky ban. Then taking away, I think that's me, and then taking away Morgana and Oriana. So really target banning John once again, forcing him into a Diana pick. I've seen John play a couple of Diana games in solo queue. This is his first time, I believe, playing it in ranked. Oh, this or, is his first time bringing it down the, on the Peach Belt yeah, stage. Yeah, on the for Peach sure. Belt stage. That's and, like, I mean. like, I mean, like, once again, Sean. Sean, our excellent reporter, brought this up last time. Yes, <laughs> last game, when Anthony was on the Nunu, that was his first time not playing Sejuani. Yep. And now they first banned Sejuani again, forcing him onto something else because he didn't want to put the Nunu. It didn't go well. So now we're, we're going to see him on the Zach for the first time. And, I mean, I think we're going to need Anthony to, to play kind of well. To, especially in that bottom lane, more so than anything, to, to try to get the W. But we do have a lot more CC. Well, we can see that they actually chose Vigar, which is a really, really good pick against Zach, because they're going to be able to stop him from just jumping right into team fights. But um, we can also kind of look at that and go back to the team comp that Georgia College shows in having Kyle playing Aurelia once again, three games in a row, which is insane. I think they're kind of just letting him have it at this point. And. Um, <coughs> Anthony playing Zach, as we had previously said, for the jungle. In the mid laner, we have John playing Diana, as previously stated, being his first time in the Peach Belt tournament playing Diana. And we have Nick playing Varus, as he did in the first game. And we have Noah on Braum. We are seeing a ton of CC on our team. Yeah, the thing is, they decided to give up the, the Lulu pick that they're going with Georgia College. I mean, they didn't ban it away. Georgia College just chose not to pick Lulu this time. Yeah, so something a, yeah. happened with Noah, I guess, on the Lulu that last game, and it made him, you know, go away from that pick. So we're going to see how that bottom lane works out. I mean, obviously, like, like we've seen, the way that this team wins is through the bottom lane, and the way that they got ahead with the Jinx last time, and she was kind of able to do a lot. I mean, she led the team. She led the game in damage. Jinx did a lot in that last game in terms of damage output, in terms of the team, the way that team was built. Yeah, well, Tristana really outranges this Varus, you know, just in terms of auto attack. But, uh, you know, we can really see that they really wanted to ban that Jinx because of the AoE capability that she has. Yeah, Jinx does have a lot of AoE. So we got one one on the blue side, one on the red side. Here we go. Georgia College is going to be on that blue side this game. You will see Aiken on the red side. Going to go back to this for just a second. See our beautiful faces? You can, yeah, you can mute it. All right. Here we go. They're underway. All right, match, match five, game three. As we can see, you know, a little bit of a cheeky play, sitting in that bush waiting for them, hoping that somebody steps up to ward, face checks it, and we'll get five manned. <clears throat> Again, though, nothing coming out too crazy in the beginning stages. I mean, USCA can play it kind of safe. Georgia College playing it kind of safe. Still no crazy... <laughs> Level one fights, man. When am I going to start seeing some of those? Uh, man, honestly, in like professional games, you know, higher up division, you don't really see that too much. Both teams are kind of 
it's a little it's risky even if you are the engager and you're, you're the one who gets a catch it's it's pretty risky because they could be doing the same thing to you you don't know whether your five man is walking into their five man you don't know what's going on in that bush you're yeah and i guess it's just really not worth the risk so much could happen you know in the early game and the early game is so important in, in league of legends like you definitely don't want to give well, an right early advantage or nothing see, we are going to see that uh you know, Vygar has a little bit of an advantage on the Diana in the early game, simply because he's a ranged champion, so he will be able to poke her down. Vygar being a very scary champion in a late game as well, being able to push endlessly and gain AP. He gains AP for every minion that he kills with his Q. His Q is that little ball that shoots out. It's able to get two AP a time. And we are seeing, once again, an early gank onto John. Oh, no. Jarvan again trying to make an early game not impact. Actually, John's not going to make not it. Not oh! actually burning any summoners, but still a little bit of a cheeky play. Man, John must have known. He must have said, hey, I'm not going to die from that. No need to flash. Yep, that was a very, very, very smart move by John. Kind of teleporting back maybe a little bit early, not with full health, but that's okay. Um, missing that CS. Now uh, we can see that they're really putting a lot of pressure into the mid lane, trying to help their mid laner out against John, putting so much pressure. And we can see in the bot lane a little bit of a, a little bit of a tussle going on right there. Not too much happening. <coughs> uh, very slow game at this point. No. Well, I mean, I wouldn't even say slow. I mean, uh, it was a good play right there from John not to burn the summoners, but I think anybody else on our team ends up burning that summoner. Yeah. And then yeah. it's it's a play for the Jarvan in the mid lane. He trusted that it would not do that much damage, and he was right. But, uh, you know, still having to burn his teleport to get back to lane after that early gank. A little bit cheeky of a play, I might say. But, <clears throat> you know, they're really trying to pressure John. They know, they know that he has the ability to carry hard, and they know the danger it comes with. Oh, blowing a flash on the Cho'Gath, actually, in the top lane. So, And that's what we kind of saw in game one. I mean, like, John, uh, Anthony was able to extend that pressure and really put some, some pressure, actually, some real pressure on the mid... I mean, the top and the mid laners. So if he can kind of get back to that, maybe Georgia College can repeat its success that it's all in game one. Maybe. And that is the intention here. Both teams having a fairly strong late game comp. comp you know, um, uh, Cho'Gath being able to scale crazy with his health, having a ton of health, um, being very tanky, and Vigar with the AP. But just explain to me the pick of Varus. I really just don't understand why Varus is kind of... I mean, I know he brings some good CC to the table, but, like, he... I feel like he's more utility more so than, like, hyper damage, hyper carry kind of damage. And that's actually what the Diana is for, is that hyper carry kind of damage stage. And uh, we can see that Cho'Gath is actually out of mana. So, um, Kyle has an opportunity. A flash from the Vigar. A great play, actually. You know, forcing so many summoners. Vigar not having enough mana to put down anything. Jarvan can't answer in any way. So we can see we actually already have a slight gold lead here. And even after John was forced to TP at level 1, um, he's still up in CS. He's up by 6 CS. And Kyle just relentless on the CS. Game. Whoa, here second comes gank, Anthony! second gank coming in. A lot of damage. There's no oh, flash. No. Oh, wait. Giving John the first blood, saying take that to that level 1 gank. Oh, here's a fun fact, man. The owners of the first blood in both game one and two are both one and oh. I mean, if you get first blood in this series, that could be enough to just push you over the edge. This is true. That's how, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're about to see a snowball Diana right here. That's he. Yeah, and you can see he bought the dark seal. Vigar teleporting back into lane. John up by 13 CS. And again, we're already kind of seeing it. Anthony having a presence in the laning phase. I think and Georgia College is at its best when Anthony's playing those early game type of, maybe not even early game, but just the chance of having some type of impact early game as a jungler. I think that's where, he, that's where he's at his best. I think he shines when he ganks. I think he shines when he ganks, and I think his mechanics will carry him through. But I don't think his invading mechanics are that good, you know, not really abusing the new new. The thing that you really want to do on Nunu is wait for them to finish half their camp, walk up, consume it, and walk away. Keeping your smite, they waste their smite too. So not only have you stolen their summoner spell, but you've also wasted their time taking the XP and gold that they would have gotten in that case. I mean, it's a good point. But I mean, Nunu just with the no engage kind of thing. Oh, there's a little skirmish going on the top lane. Kyle taking up the a lot damage. of damage. A lot of damage to the Cho'Gath, but the minions doing a ton of damage themselves. Gotta be careful of those minion waves. And uh, we can see that John actually still has his flash up. He's about to hit level 6, but he has no mana, so he probably will be backing soon. A second gank. Oh, uh, look at Jarvan. Look at Jarvan Roman. Oh, uh, wait, no. John has full mana. He just has that. That's a visual error. I'm sorry about that. That is a visual bug. 
as you can see on the side that it shows he has no mana but he actually has full mana Jarvan's stealing our frog stealing the frog um, bot lane pretty overextended they have no wards this would actually be a pretty optimal time to steal or to gank bot but you know we're not really seeing that kind of pressure this is where Kyle needs to actually start being pretty careful because that Shogath has a ton of damage with his ult. John actually oh, John's solo making a kill. This is going to be a snowball if I have ever seen one before. Kyle getting engaged on by the Shogath. Shogath not having enough mana to ult and a 1v1. Oh, there we go. Georgia Kyle is getting it done all, everywhere right now. The right jungle, now. the jungle top, having the mid. Great rotations. And I mean, Nick came in here earlier saying, if, I mean, if we can kind of just break even in the bot lane, I, I mean, that's a win. That's a win for Georgia College. I agree. And so far, they really haven't been to extend that pressure. Now, now they're going to put a lot of pressure on the dragon and here. And they're going to they're steal gonna this blue buff. Contest the blue. I mean, Contesting Anthony's the flying. Blue. He's flashing. Flash. It didn't back. matter. The flash is already gone. They're going to give the kill to John. They're going to give the kill to John. Just letting his ability come back up. And there it is. John with another kill. 3-0. That is a 3-0, oh. John. We that talked about it. A, a we talked about it. this is this is how it's gonna be. That first blood is so crucial, especially for the mid lane, and they're rotating to a first dragon earth drake, which increases tower damage. If you can get this before you have even taken the first tower, it's phenomenal, allowing all lanes to have extreme amounts of pressure, twenty percent more damage. John starting his early back, seeing that Vigar has returned the lane, there is no pressure, no reason for him to say. The amount of damage he does is insignificant. Bot lane rotating back down, so they do not miss any CS, and we can see. That bot lane is almost equal in CS, behind by three. John up by six. The jungler, Zach down by, down by six. But he's that's, down by six, but he's got two. He's got two, two assists. Assist. So yeah. the kill participation is there, and once again, Kyle being exemplary on the Aurelia, as to no surprise. One and zero with a solo kill, up by twenty CS. I mean, him them really giving away the Aurelia. Yes, he didn't have a huge impact in game two, yeah, but we can or, see or really in game buff. one. But he hasn't lost lane. Like he our just doesn't lose lane. Currently getting stolen. The Jarvan actually has smite. Oh, a flash from. The Chogath might be yeah, a flash from the Chogath. This is going to be a little bit risky of a play. Oh, a flash no. from. Oh, this may be He's it. Dead. Don't greed <laughs> for it. Is he going to greed? He greeds it, but is he out? And he narrowly escapes. The Jarvan's looking Jarvan now. Trying to. Trying to escape right here. It may be a little bit risky of a play for John to play right there, but he decides to just go mid, play it safe, and get that CS. A wise move. He's got a potion ticking. He just got a kill. His teleport is up, so he actually has potential to roam now as he has just solo killed. The bot lane, once again, kind of just playing it safe. Nick occasionally getting up in CS and then going back down up one or two CS. Nothing special here. And that's okay for Georgia that's okay. College to that do that, okay. especially the way that the top lane and yeah, mid lane come out right even, now. it's a good play. I mean, they can even probably throw Anthony down there to extend some pressure onto that bot lane and really make them, you know, make them do something because if yep. the bot lane starts to fall behind, this game is definitely over. Yes, the uh, bot lane, you know, a lot is depending on the bot lane coming out even. And uh, we can actually really see that <laughs> right now. The uh, top laner has no flash. Chogath is getting destroyed by 30 CS. That lead ever so slowly. Oh, here comes Anthony. Here comes Anthony with the knockup. Chogath is no insane. Flash. There was no ult. This is an ult. There's no flash. The double knockup, the pullback, giving Aurelia the kill. These ganks have just been disturbingly good. Oh, yeah, he's been just good. And they're going to put a lot of pressure on my top tower and as well. Top tower actually potentially falling because he has Demolish, two AD champions. And that one Earth If this Jarvan steps up, he will die. If Jarvan steps up, he will die. There's <laughs> Anthony again all over the place. Jumping, taking the aggro of the turret, taking him down. Jarvan's going to ult. He might actually die from that. No, he's got his passive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's good. And and uh, so not, the only, not only do we get a buff transfer, we also get that first blood. John getting a kill in the mid lane. This game is collapsing fast. First tower, eight and zero, oh, and this is this is a five k gold lead at. Well, this 10 is Georgia minutes. College League of Legends. This, this is, is Georgia College League of Legends. When this John, is what we, this is what Emperor John, for. is popping off like this, and there you know, and, nothing and Kyle's you able do. to get that advantage. And nothing Anthony's you can ganking. Do. Nothing, like you nothing. said. Nothing you nothing. can do. The mid lane tower already down half. The amount of CS that this Vigar is losing is increasing crazily. This tower looks like it will fall itself. There's no one there to reciprocate it. And this tower actually will fall, which is now a 2-0 at two towers down at 4-11 minutes is quite the feature. <laughs> the feat of strength in League of Legends. You know, 5-0 on the Diana, 2-0 on the Aurelia. Both champions extremely fed and ahead in CS. The jungler with a 4-kill participation, 4 out of 8, which is extremely good. And generously donating many of the kills. 
And the thing is, he's not even that far behind in CS. He had like six CS, might be like a camp or two, but like. A TP coming in the bot lane. The bot side knows they cannot stay. They know that they cannot stay here. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see a double knock up. Oh, there's the Janna ult. A really good ult by Janna, but that bot tower, now That's we okay. have five bot. This bot tower is going to fall, demolish. And we are going to see a Windrake coming soon, but honestly not quick enough. And that three towers to oh. Oh, wow. You know, we're quickly seeing this game. Anthony's just jumping all over the yeah, place. He's jumping, Anytime man. he's we jumping, are getting a rotation time. mid. They're actually not able to even stay to damage that tower at all because they know that that rotation is coming. A TP back top, taking minimal tower damage. John barely losing any CS from that rotation. Two TPs into the bot side, which was pretty, pretty rough, but, you know, preventing us from having that playmaking ability elsewhere on the map, but still collecting that bot tower. Three towers to none. Even more increasing to a 6K gold lead. I mean, this is why, why can't we see this Georgia College in game two? Like the way they've come out and they played early game has just been phenomenal. And they now we are getting the that early game lead. This is quite, quite the lead that we have seen right here. There's the Our rotations are good. We have been five man twice at this point in the game. At 12, 13 minutes in the game, we've had a five man on the map multiple times and that the thing is, is we're overpowering them so hard that they have to respect it like they, they at least have to come and if, if that's what georgia college wants you to do is to come and fight them right we now because that anthony's we're coming way in, stronger getting anthony. the flash from the vigar and we can see once again there's just oh, the nothing is scared. yeah the vigar is scared there's just nothing they're gonna rift summon rift, yep. rift Herald getting summoned mid there is nothing that they can do that mid tower is gonna fall that mid tower will quickly quickly fall if if anything happens we are clearing wards they're gonna try and rotate We can see a lot of tower damage coming down, but you know, not too much that we can do. A, a jump in from, but no damage, not successful. Oh, there goes the mid tower. It's about to fall. Oh. Mid tower, not not quite, not quite, enough. not quite falling, not quite falling. There's a flash a by Jarvan. The old coming the in, Jarvin. just getting the brom though. <laughs> yeah, just getting the brom. Oh, that's looking good for Georgia College. And oh, there Zach goes. Falls. Zach oh, Diana getting stunned in the middle of all of them. This is Diana's not a lot of the damage. Flash over the wall. The Tristana's Tristana going jumping. crazy. The Tristana's going crazy. Tristana, a risky play by this Tristana. A lot oh, of damage by John. The, this, the cooldown's not quite there. Uh-oh, the disengage coming from the Janna. The Carrius was almost there, but... Oh, don't overextend, Nick. Don't overextend. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a good hourglass. It was a good hourglass. Kyle coming in. And actually, that was a fairly good trade for us as we are still full HP and able to pressure this tower. And this tower will fall. That was a so, bit of a crazy fight, it though. It was. It was crazy. It was a two-for-one, but we get a tower. So I would say that's a pretty positive trade, especially a mid-tier tower. And uh, that bot wave is pushing into them. So tower damage will be coming on to that. You're <laughs> seeing the rotation is just phenomenal at this point. Well, I think Georgia College damage, is willing to give a little bit. I mean, they're willing, they're willing to, give to give if they can just secure something. To give. And we can see a lot of damage coming onto this tier two bot tower as well. Half health yes, already. Kyle. I mean, just to slow them down from the just back to side. Slow them down. Yep. You know, there's not too much that we can do. We got wards in the jungle. We know where they are. That vision control. They have none. They have one ward. They literally have one pink ward placed on the map. No other vision on the entire map from the red side. Well, now having one more ward, but ooh, slightly missing our vision right there with the scanner. You know, getting another dragon. This may be two dragons. Are we going to actually secure this dragon, though? Because it believe, looks like a lot I of the USB will Aiken be team. Able to. I do not think. They do not have vision of it. They do not have oh, vision. They don't even know. They don't even know. They do not even know. They're actually trying to donate a lot of this gold to this Jarvan, who's, you know, he's really struggling to kind of have map pressure. He's 0-3 at this point in the game. 0-4 Vigar. Vigar may not have been the best choice in this game. You need mobility. And that's what John kind of realized when he was playing Zoe. So he has mobility, but only momentarily. Yeah, you can use you it need the consistent dodge. mobility. And that's what Diana gives you. Consistent mobility, and that Diana gives you that dash, and that dash is just dead, as we have seen, of course. John being five and one. And the thing is, John even fell in that last fight, and all things didn't go, you know, crazy. The earth didn't freeze over. We still had a lot of damage coming in there from Nick. We had a decent amount coming in from the Irelia. Like, we still had a threat when John wasn't there. And that's what's really scary about this Georgia College and team. And Zach right now. didn't have his passive up. If Zach had his passive up, that would have been a different story. Mm hmm. Because he went down kind of early in that fight. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now we can see that they're just kind of resetting, clearing their jungle, uh, getting rid of all those wards. Um, not really, not really much going on right here. Cho'Gath trying to catch the Zack. Zack finishing off that pink ward that was started. Um, we can see that they're going to start pressuring into their jungle a little bit. 
Nick playing a little bit more passive. The Cho'Gath is overextended. Oh, getting ulted. Marisol coming in. He's it's gonna be in trouble. The CC coming in is just going to be too much. There's not much you can do. Nick picking up that kill. 2-0 and now. Up in CS. He's doing well. We've got four in the bot lane. And then, I mean, and from the top, and then we got Diana in the bot. Actually holding Pressure three against players three there. players, which is phenomenal. So... The respect that they have in the use of John is giving us this free tower top. It's a free tower, and they're going to keep pressuring it if, you know, if another minion wave comes. He's pinging topside. Jarvan not able to do anything. They can just keep pushing. There's so much bot, and you know what? Now they're forced to rotate over. They're forced to rotate over. They and then here comes John on the teleport. Here comes John with a teleport, able to just continuously pressure this game. Uh, Nick getting focused down by the Jarvan, but the damage is just too much to carry. It's too tanky. There's nothing they can do. Tristana getting knocked up. Taking a tower at uh -oh. an in hit uh -oh. tower. Kyle might be in trouble here. Kyle may be in trouble. Down. Anthony, Anthony, gonna save him. Anthony gonna be jumping in, in a little bit greedy. A little bit greedy. Ulti. He's so tanky, though. A huge ultimate by Anthony. A huge ultimate. He still has his exhaust. Exhausted Tristana. She's going to run away. Tristana's going to be the only one left alive. It's a free is inhibitor. The only one. That is a free inhibitor, and they are just destroying this game. 14 to 3. Nearly a 10k, 9k gold lead at 17 minutes. This is the biggest lead either team has had in this entire series. With an inhibitor down, except for at the end of last game, I believe there's a little bit more, but that was another end. I mean, at least at this point, at 17 yeah, minutes, at 17 I mean, this minutes, is this is the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Good um, stuff right there by Georgia College, picking up multiple kills, picking up the inhibitor. I mean, the map definitely. is theirs right now. It's their game to lose. And I, you know, I just want to point out this game, you know. We said before this game even started that John was coming back with a vengeance. He got he felt disrespected last game, and he came in and he, he is, he's really showing what he's got this game. Eight, one, and two. Listen, if all we have to do is ban the Malzahar every <laughs> game, I'll give up Malzahar being banned if we can finish. I mean, with this with John playing like this, like he did I mean, in game one and game three. They they, I mean Jesus, he. He's mad. You know why he's mad? His KDA got ruined by that last game. <laughs> oh, that is. It's going to hurt. But him playing with a 10 up right now, he had a 12 in game one. I mean, it's not going to be exactly perfect. It's, it's not. Seen. But, you know, he's, he's coming oh, back. He's going to get another kill right here. Jarvis is <laughs> in trouble. That burst damage by John. Nine kills for the man. Yeah. You know, he's really trying to bump that. He's got uh, he's 11. His KDA being 11 right now. So, really trying to fix that little bump in the road that he had last game, making sure. That it is coming I mean, the, in the three spies. games, because we've lost three games total now, we've only lost one match. Coming in, oh, not really oh, getting no. anything. A lot of damage. He's got his passive. He'll be okay. Oh, he'll, he will be fine. In the few games that Georgia College has lost, it's, it's John that struggles. Yeah, when John does not do well, we see that Georgia College does not do well. But so. when we're winning, John's playing great, so. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to say here. I, th I, think, <laughs> I think we live and die by John. I mean,. Yeah, but I almost not not to discredit John. Obviously, he's a huge part. The no, mid laner being one of the most impactful lanes in the entire game. You know, more so than yeah. You know, I, I feel mid lanes impact just because of the roaming potential. Because you're in the middle of the map, it's just a good mid laner. Mid laner is just as effective as a good jungler. You know, yeah. jungler rotations having so much to do. But um, we can see that they're pressuring that mid tower, and it's about to fall. You know, this is all without bear. I mean, Deciding to just tank it <laughs> and just say whatever, we don't oh, care. So flash is being yeah, flash is being burned. Um, a lot of damage is being tanked by the team, by the tower. You know, they just finally decided to focus it down. There's no minions here, but they just don't really care. Yeah, and that's going to bring the inhibitor down as well. bring the inhibitor down. We got our 80 carriage just wailing on that bot tower. 15 to 3. It really seems the morale of the enemy team has kind of given up. But, you know, something I do want to point out is look at their 80 carry. <laughs> I mean, he's still playing he's good. 2-0. Oh, oh, it's phenomenal. Oh, oh, did he want to even want to ult like that? The bars that were was, coming in. That was some dirty damage right oh, John's there. Eyed. This is looking bad for Georgia College here. We're going to do some no, damage. Come out. The damage coming out from the bars in the back the line. The coming out in the back line. Getting oh, knocked no. back by the Tristana. Tristana going to ult him away. That's going to bring Anthony down. I don't know if his passes. A triple still kill. Low. Am I seeing a penta kill here? Oh, man. The triple's, the triple's still pretty fast. Are we going to see a penta kill? Could we, there's still time for the penta. You know, I think he kind of wants it. Oh, oh, oh he's, he he's overextending. He's gonna die for <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you're gonna die. I would die for the pen. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a that should be a W right there for Georgia College. Yeah, it they looks like. Try to wrap it up. It looks like this. Oh, here comes Shogath. He's mad. Tristana jumping in, you know. No, that's gonna get the jump yeah. reset. She's gonna jump again. Yeah, she's, she's gonna, gonna get Nick. Gonna she's gonna, gonna get somebody else. She's gonna, we might have overextended uh, just no. a little bit. I don't think she's actually gonna be able to. Yeah, she's not gonna be able to continue that. Um, Aurelia no, coming in. That would Aurelia coming in. Yeah, you don't want to mess with that. You don't want to mess with that. They had no vision, but they knew she was up and just said, no, thank you. Oh, yeah. man. So, we are seeing some pretty, pretty good stuff this game. This is, yeah, we're uh, seeing a pretty one-sided affair, and I think that, you know, uh, avoiding a Georgia College complete throw 
We should be looking at a W here on the side of GC. I think I'd like to say after that first game that we're really, you know, they're really trying to try out some new team comps, see what they could do, um, having people on new champions they'd never played before. You know, they're really trying to see what they could work in, and uh, it was more of an experiment. Obviously, just from the bounce back, you know, last game took an L, but this game was bounce back. And honestly, it's not even that important that we play super well during the regular season. Like, the tournament really is what matters. And if all 10 teams make the tournament, like, yeah, it'd be good to be that number one or that number two team and get those free buys. But, like, if you don't win the tournament and you don't go to nationals, it doesn't matter. So, if you're going to lose, lose now and figure yeah, it out no, now. I agree. I agree. Plus, uh, you know, I think they were pretty confident that they could win this game just based on like the victories that we have seen the type of victories it's more of a slaughter yeah. and the loss was not the loss was more of a especially the second game the second pace. game was, was a close game and we could it was won close it. It, we could have but then we kind of near the end of the game they really really outscaled us i mean I, I don't think the peach belt is a sure lock for us i mean obviously we've had some big wins against usc penbrook and then we won this week again so that's two in a row now the, the tie of the season high with two in a row earlier in the season but i think that if we got really we're really going to have to get tested by this, like, Augusta team and by this North Georgia team that are, you know, undefeated in 3-1. and one. Those are the teams that are really going to be in our way come tournament time. I really don't think anything about anybody else can beat against Georgia College right now. But maybe somebody else will come up and, and surprise us. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we're going uh, to see in 8 or 22 minutes, you know, just around the same time in the first game, we collected that ban. Once again, getting the ban. We got John pushing in the bot side, running that, that 4 Four and one team comp. We got four people pressuring John having teleport to be able to, you know, come join the team that in him being back oh, up and knock up. going crazy. Bring another, them both together. Another, another pretty good ult, but that show got just getting caught out. Ducari is taking a lot of damage, but, you know, it, it just was not enough. There's just yeah, not enough. The top laner on the show guy, uh, he hasn't had the best game, but honestly, in the second game, it was the mid laner who actually kind of stepped up and played a little bit better. Uh, for USC Aiken, so. it, it looks like oh, like a really good ult by that Braum, I want to say. Same like, really good ult really by Braum. Vegar stunning everybody. Getting and actually, Ducari uh, is going down by a static shift drop. Um, a lot of damage <laughs> from John, getting that stun on the Vigar, you know. The dead Vigar, the yeah, just, just a little too late with the with the Baron. This, you know, the Nars taking that down. It's just this is just going to tumble, and it looks like Georgia College comes out on top. With a two and one victory against USC Aiken. A well played match by both teams. Oh yeah, well played match by both teams. I mean the first game three Georgia College has been to this split in the regular season split, so it's definitely a big deal, I think, that they took them to three games. Um no no joke, USC Aiken kinda came out and they played a little bit better than I thought they would. Let's take a look at those advanced stats brought to you by Ethan Omer. <laughs> No, I'm brought to you by our professional analyst. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so, uh, once again, we're looking at a lot of damage here from John. You know, uh, not even playing in, in a sort of AoE burst mage. Diana's not really too AoE based of a champion. We can see that 16,000 damage being the most damage in the game, even more than AoE champions like Vygar. You know, excelling, excelling. 11, 2, and 5. Obviously, a clear carry by John, but also, let's not undermine Nick. Phenomenal 8, 0, and 3. And who could forget about the 0-1 and 14, Braum? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who could really forget about the Aurelia in the top lane? I mean, Funny enough, three Aurelias two, in a row. And six, but, like, the pressure that he dealt, he had a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, overall, this, day, this game, you know, that early, that early, the fact that John was able to survive that early mid-game, or that early gank that at level, level, two, level two, yeah. yeah, and not burn any summoners, that was yeah, that was big. That wasted the jungler's time, set him behind in the jungler, allowed our jungler to kind of come in, do a lot more rotations around the map, get more ganks in, and the pressure was there, and the ganks were there. The summon the laners were burning summoners on their own, so when the jungler got there, it was free. Yep, you're not lying. All right, we're gonna take a second, get John in here, kick Ethan out for a little bit, maybe bring him back at the end. All right. All right, John, how you feeling after that three-game series, man? That's a yeah, long I, series. I feel, I feel vindicated. Yeah? <laughs> Dude, all, all these other schools, their mid laners, they pick these pansy champions. They pick <laughs> Malzahar, they pick Vagar, they're afraid, dude. None of them want to scrap. So, 
after game two, I realized that he was just going to pick another far back champion like that. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to pick Diana and I'm just going to massacre him just some better. Yeah, I mean, I saw that in, in game one. I mean, you had a pretty big lead there with the Zoe. I mean, granted, Malzahar wasn't picked. Right, and right. I think that the difference in the jungler. Wait, I know that you're not a jungler, but I want to still talk about what the difference in the jungling scheme went one from game one to two to three. Like, you know, Anthony playing Sejuani all the time. That's his champion on the stage. And him not playing Sejuani for the first time with the Nunu. Kind of talk about how he was feeling about that. Yeah, Um. so with the Nunu, we actually kind of meant to pick uh, Jarvan before they did, but we picked our AD carry instead, which uh, that was just an accident. But, okay. I mean, he did fine on the Nunu. It's just I played poorly. We couldn't really get anything going. So that, uh, that game was just eh. Okay, I mean... When, John, when you're on, the team is really on, though. I mean, not, not, not even talking about just this game, going back to previous weeks. I mean, when, you, when you're when you winning the lane and when Anthony's got it going on or who are Sean, whoever's coming in on the jungler is there, I mean, you're really playing well. Can, I mean, just kind of talk about that, how, how what brings to your success. Yeah, like, so that, that's because our junglers are really good. Like, they, they set me ahead, and I really can snowball a lead, but it's really them just getting me ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not doing too much special. I don't know, man. The score says otherwise. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, after they get me ahead, then I massacre <laughs> everyone. But I'm not doing anything special to get ahead. I mean, I'm, I don't know. You might have known this. I don't know if you knew this or not. But you were third in KDA before coming in yeah. to this weekend. So that's a pretty big deal, Georgia College, getting his name out there. I mean, what now? Four and one. What, eight and eight and three overall in, in games. Kind of talk about the success and, you know, what are some of the end, end of the season goals for you and the team? Okay, um. So we need to work on our draft phase and our just early game, basically, because uh, that, that USCA was probably our second hardest match, the first being Augusta. But they were really challenging, and when we play against schools that are more coordinated than them, it's going to be a lot more difficult if, we're, if our early game falls apart. Mm -hmm. So as long as we have a strong early game, I think we can beat any team. Okay. I mean, and then going into, the, I mean, you obviously came out of homecoming week 2-0. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, a pretty big deal. Yeah. I mean, we had the concert Friday night. We had the basketball game, and they went two, They went 1-1. So Georgia College won a total of 3-1 homecoming weekend. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty big weekend. Happy homecoming. How did this weekend feel? Uh, great, honestly. Like, it was, uh, it was kind of a scramble to get the uh, Friday game going just because everyone had to be somewhere, and we had to get the game scheduled early. But yeah, it all worked out. It felt pretty good. All right, cool, John. Well, congrats on the win. Can tell the team congrats later on. We're not going <laughs> to see them on stream. But um, that's going to wrap it up here for the Bobcat Broadcast Network. This is Georgia College 4-1? Four 4-1, four four yeah. 4-1. <laughs> All right, bye, guys.